Welcome to the Business and Brews podcast, where our mission is to highlight local businesses in the Triangle area and shed light on different industries. All right, welcome back, everyone, once again to the Business and Brews show. I am super excited about this episode because we have worked really hard uh, to be able to talk to Molly here. Uh, Molly is uh, the founder of Saving Grace in North, Wake Forest, North Carolina. So Molly, really quick, just tell us uh, who you are and, and what you guys do. So I'm Molly, the founder and director of Saving Grace. I've lived in Wake Forest uh, my whole life, right? You know, where Saving Grace is. So I worked in animal welfare and um, adoption, and animal control, and saw all of that right outside of um, right out of college. And, um, you know, Wake County has come so far in the past 20 years, definitely on the resources that we have for the pets in our community. Um, so I was, uh, I was there right out, right out of college and saw the need for adoption of, of pets in our state and, um, wanted to reach out to some of the communities that are, you know, not in an area like Wake County, where there's a lot of people, there's a lot of good resources, volunteers, we have a lot of access to medical care and um, adopters, whereas a lot of our more rural counties, they they don't have that as much. And it's in those counties where the overpopulation is, is at the worst. Um, so, you know, a lot of those counties um, are fairly rural and a lot more um, outdoor pets and, and overpopulation. So I wanted to partner with them to provide them with resources for their animals to be adopted and, and also have a, another adoption place in Wake County for people to find great pets. That's awesome. So Molly, one of my favorite things uh, besides the fact that you deal in puppies and uh, <laughs> everybody, everybody likes puppies, but uh, it, my, my favorite question to ask folks is how they got started. So, um, I mean, I, I see where you kind of got involved in it um, from the beginning, but you know, what, what made you want to start a nonprofit? What made you, what brought you to those decisions to, to put everything together? Just recognizing the need that there are so many great people, you know, in our community that are looking for companion animals and there wasn't a whole lot of options of places to go and adopt and also to have a facility where people can interact a lot with the dogs, um, you know, a lot typically in the shelters, they are, you know, they're separate. We don't always know a whole lot about them. Um, you know, Saving Grace, they're free roaming. They're everywhere, which it can be chaos at times, but it also gives our adopters a little bit of more of an experience to see how they are in a natural environment, how they're going to be with other dogs, how they're going to interact with strangers. Um, you know, it's not always, a you know, a hundred percent, um, idea of what their behavior is, but it, but it's a good one for a shelter point of view. So, um, also knowing how many in the rural counties were being euthanized, we were, still the third state in the country still now oh for euthanasia rates. Yeah. So to reach out to some of those communities that, you know, are really struggling and help them with the logistics of how to move those animals into the communities where there are more people available to give those animals homes. So. That's awesome. Um, so I know you talked about them being free roaming. Um, I know you, also have like a koi pond area where if someone huh. wants to adopt they can visit uh, right. was that something that you set up out the gate or or did you come up with that idea a little later on so we have lots of different areas different garden spaces i'm a gardener too so it kind of just ended up evolving into different visiting gardens um so i would have to section off different sections to garden where the dogs wouldn't wouldn't be and those just kind of turned into visiting areas so a lot of you know a lot of adopters will come spend some time with a group of dogs and then might want to see you know one or two one-on-one -on -one. or 
they either bring their family dog to find a, a companion for it. So we want to see how they are one on one, you know, and we still even though we're kind of an alternative shelter situation, it's still a, a shelter vibe for a new dog coming in. It's overwhelming. And we don't want to put somebody's new dog, you know, among 10 dogs in a group that might already know each other. So um, those those areas, the Koi Gardens, they give us a place where the dogs can meet, you know, with a little less um, chaos. We should, right. we should. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure there's plenty of that with so many dogs running around. There is <laughs> is organized chaos all the time, pretty much. Yeah. So if someone is interested, because I know you talked about volunteers, so obviously volunteers, people to adopt the dogs, but what what other ways can people help out? So we have every, you know, everything that it takes to run a business it takes to run a nonprofit, if not more, because instead of having, you know, as much staff as, you know, most for-profit businesses, we rely a lot on volunteers and managing volunteers takes definitely as much, if not a lot more time to, you know, coordinate who schedules, who can be here when, you know, you can't say, I'm paying you eight to five, you have to say, when are you available? And then, you know, patch together those schedules to make sure that we get coverage for all the animal care. Transports are a big one. We, you know, we take dogs to veterinarians, groomers. They have to be picked up from shelters every day. So multiple times every day we have transports going in different areas. So we rely on people to volunteer from that. And that's anywhere from taking, you know, one dog to a vet appointment to sometimes we do Spay neuter runs in groups of 30. So they might have to be taking a big van. It just really depends on their comfort level and what they're available to do. We have a big van if they're comfortable, but some people just want to, you know, take their vehicle. Um, the admin side is is huge. You know, we have to keep up with all the volunteers and their training and again their schedule. So that takes a lot of time. Each dog. Most of the ones coming in have had no veterinary care at all. So we have to start their vet care from the very beginning. So even these adult dogs come in may not have any sort of vet care. So there's a lot of, um, you know, records to keep making sure the right animal gets the right vaccines and medication and, you know, they're set up for spay neuter or any other surgeries they might need. So it's, all of those different roles it takes to to get the animals ready for adoption. And we also have um, a great social media team that helps promote a lot of our dogs, you know, like our puppies, our cute puppies, they go quickly. So that's never a problem to, to get those adopted. But some of our older dogs, they definitely take more promotion, you know, get, doing some videos on what they're great at, interacting with other people. Um, you know, they all start their crate training. Everybody sleeps in a crate at night and everybody's fed in a crate. So they do start those learning those skills to be able to transition and be successful in a home. Because a lot of these guys have never lived in a home before. Most have all lived outdoors. So we want to go ahead and start that process to make them a successful pet for the next person. Um, you know, certainly our goal is to be able to place these dogs in a home where they're going to be a good match and they're going to be successful. And that doesn't lead to the disappointment, you know, for the family and, you know, also the dog. Sometimes it does happen. You know, people might get a dog and find out they're allergic or they have another animal in the home and they don't jive together. You know, even if you introduce them at Saving Grace, you don't really know until you get them home and they're in their own territory and see how see how it works. So sometimes, you know, there are times that we have to make swaps and just kind of work at it until we get the right fit. But in general, we try to really set everybody up for success so they don't have to um, keep changing environments. So we also have a great host program, a weekend host program. And that's a really awesome opportunity for people who want to foster, but might work a lot of hours, or maybe they can't have a dog because they travel or their work schedule doesn't allow that. And that's picking up your dog 
on Friday evening and you return it on Sunday night or Monday morning. And that gives the dogs a great opportunity to get someone on one time, kind of get out and about in our community. They represent saving grace and adoption and meet lots of people that might not know about adoption or saving grace. And so they kind of represent us out and about. And it also, you know, even though saving grace is a great place for a shelter, it's still stressful for these guys. So going and being able to have a quiet home to sleep in is a really great break. So that's a great opportunity too, for people that want to host for the weekend, but not quite make a commitment. That's awesome. Right. That lets people get a little, a uh, little sample of what owning a dog would be like. Right. 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 That's and fantastic. what kind of dog they want. If they want an old lazy dog or they want a young busy dog, we, we can pretty much pair them up with whatever they're looking for or want to give a go. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I know you said they, they go through pretty much the, all the vet care and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, uh, when someone adopts from you, they're, they're getting a dog that's pretty much brought up to speed on everything and taken care of. It is. So we really try to make sure our adopters have a realistic expectation because, um, you know, we want everybody to know that, We have done, um, you know, a lot of vet care for each animal, but it's definitely an ongoing situation and and they're going to need care going on from there. Um, You know, typically the dogs, they've had no vet care before, so they're going to need a series of vaccines and a series of deworming. A lot of them have been in a shelter or animal control facility where they've been exposed to maybe a hundred other animals that also weren't vaccinated and mm. also haven't been on their monthly heartworm, flea and tick preventatives. So they've they've had high exposure for sure to other animals. And sometimes that isn't something that we can fix in their short stay with us. It might be something that goes on you know, for a couple of weeks and they need to finish the series. But, you know, by far the cost that we put into each animal for spay, neuter, vaccines, their microchip, if they have any sort of um, trauma, you know, we've addressed all of those issues. Um, you know, as far as we can tell, everything is done and, and they're up to date. That's fantastic. So yeah. if, if somebody you know, wants to adopt through you guys, can you tell me kind of what that process looks like? So we have a adoption request on the website. You go there and you fill it out. You kind of give information, what size you're looking for, what type of energy level you're looking for. And you set up a, a time to come out and visit. We encourage people to plan on several visits. You know, some people come in and they find a dog that they want within the first 15 minutes or they've seen a dog on the website and they know they want that dog. But we try to set people up to to have some time to spend with the dogs. You know, this is typically a long term commitment. If you're going to have to to live with this dog in your home, get one you like and get one that you feel like you drive with. So, you know, we don't want anybody to rush at that. Um, You know, I think sometimes people do feel a little rushed because there's other people there that are looking at the dogs. But, you know, there's so many that need a home. It's definitely worth planning some time to invest in spending, you know, not not rushing and spending some time meeting all the dogs we have. And, you know, the other thing is there's a lot of dogs we get that might not be as pretty as the dog they saw online and, you know, they might, they might bond with them better. So to come with an open mind for what type of dog, what type of personality, kind of like, I think if you're meeting a friend, you know, if you're making a new friend, you kind of have those characteristics in mind that, that you want the qualities you want and, and a dog is very similar. So, um, you know, they can certainly, come multiple visits until they find something that they really love. That's awesome. It, uh, it, it certainly is a, a new friend. <laughs> it is a new friend. Right. And we, like I said, it, it's one that's in your house and with you for a long time. So 
we understand that it's important to get one that you feel really comfortable with because we believe if you're happy, the dog will be happy. I, I like that. So Molly with, um, you know, kind of how you got started and where you're at now, I'm definitely curious. Um, what, what do you see in saving grace's future? What are, what are some goals you're working to accomplish with it? So we've recently put in established our spay neuter clinic and that is on site at saving grace. We just started that, um, this past November COVID was definitely a wake up call to, uh, be a little more self-sufficient and not reliable on outside clinics. We um, have a lot of great veterinary partners that they're all super supportive of us. But with COVID, some had to close and some went to half staff. And mm. that was incredibly challenging because the number of animals coming in didn't change. They kept coming. So yeah. it was a struggle to, you know, grow our foster program quickly um, you know, to try to open up a foster to adopt program, which was, that was pretty interesting um, for people who wanted to adopt, but we weren't able to fully vet the dog yet. You know, the, the general adopter expects that we have, have vetted, fully vetted the dog. And um, that was a challenge for us to be able to do, um, you know, and, and we did, we, we worked through it. It was, it was a challenge again, but we worked through it, but establishing our spay neuter clinic was, was huge. So now it's on site and we um, have that process right there. So we're not as reliant on other outside sources to keep our animals moving. And that way we don't have to turn more away from the shelters. They can keep coming in. Um, we have, reached out to um, one of the counties, Robinson County, we work with a lot, that area of North Carolina, it's close to south of the border. That's one of the areas that has the highest intake in euthanasia in our state. And we are in the process of setting up uh, air, uh, uh, like a little hub there where the animals can come in, they can start their vaccines and we can have a transport arranged for them a couple of days a week, which We've been doing for many years from that area, but sometimes I might not have somebody there that day and to get that animal um, into our program and offer it up for adoption, it needs to be picked up that day. So this would be a place that could hold them overnight, a couple of nights until we can get them back to Wake County and put them up for adoption. So that's been, um, that's an exciting and overwhelming um, thing we're dealing with right now to, to get that set up and going. It's a, it's a, um, you know, a process that I haven't done before, but we're going to work, work it out. And hopefully that'll make it possible for a lot more animals to, to be able to get to saving grace. And also, our goal there is to be able to offer some spay neuter resources. There's a new spay neuter clinic in Fayetteville, which is in that area. And um, in our communities where, you know, there is a high level of poverty or overpopulation, transportation is an issue. And those um, communities don't necessarily have the transportation to get the animals to the spay neuter clinic. So we're hoping to set up a process where we can offer spay neuter to some of those animals that are owned and people who love their animal and do a great job keeping it, you know, in their home and caring for it, but just may not have the resources to spay and neuter it. And so the puppies just keep coming and coming and coming. We want to be able to keep that dog in that home, just stop the flow of puppies <laughs> coming yeah. to us. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's awesome. Cause you talked about on-site spay and neuter and yeah. uh, that that little hub. That's that's mm -hmm. pretty exciting because that's a it's, little it's bit really of really exciting. It's it is, and we're in the very oh. beginning, so it's going to be kind of like starting a, a saving grace over there, starting really small again. We're starting with no volunteers and no fosters, and just got to build it from the ground up and see how we do. Yeah, no, that's. That's awesome. That gives you more reach. So, um, I, I mean, I, I think we, we pretty much have a firm grasp of some of the challenges that you've seen, but is there, is there anything in particular, even over the course of running a nonprofit Molly that you would say was, 
particularly challenging? Um, there's a, like I said, I think the volunteers relying on the volunteers to, you know, re- relying on um, people to give of their time. We have the most incredible volunteer program for sure. And, you know, we are, we are super lucky to have built that, but, you know, it was a challenge to have to build that from the ground up and, and learn how to pair different personalities and um, talents and different skill levels. That's, that's always um, a challenge, you know, when new people come in to try to get them in the right fit for what they want to do. You know, some people love working with the dogs one-on-one, but you know, we're outside, it's hot, it's cold, it's dirty. It's a lot of physical work. Sometimes that might not be for everybody. And then trying to fit them into an area that that they'll be successful, you know, because they'll enjoy it and stay with us. And then, um, you know, there'll be a real benefit to, to our program, too. And we want everybody to enjoy all the time they spend with us. Um, you know, fundraising is a challenge for every nonprofit. You know, we have our dogs are available for adoption for 375. And that is a portion, you know, some of the puppies, we probably spend about that much on or a little bit more. But a lot of our adults, you know, they are heartworm positive, they need heartworm treatment, they need different surgeries. And a lot of our dogs cost us easily a thousand dollars. And so we have to go and raise that money to make up the difference, to be able to offer them for adoption, you know, for, for a reasonable cost so that people will adopt them and give them the chance to have a forever home. So that is really challenging. You know, we've discussed before about, you know, maybe not taking so many that are heartworm positive or not taking those that need different surgeries, but, you know, I really feel like those dogs that are great family pets, we should try to work that out and and try to figure out how to offer them a chance at adoption because those are typically the ones that have not had a great experience with people. And, you know, if they are sweet, great dog, then they should be able to get that, that treatment. Um, again, this year's going to be really hard. We're still feeling the effects of no fundraising and um, no events. We've done some fundraising, but not what we usually do. Um, You know, we've really relied on the people who Uh might have helped us on the admin side and the fundraising side to actually jump in and help us with the animal care this year, because we did have less people come in on site who were nervous with COVID. So that has been a big challenge for sure. And it'll probably be something that, you know, we deal with as long as there is saving grace. And we just try to stay ahead of it and, you know, educate our community on how much these dogs actually need and what it costs us. We have a lot of great veterinarians that support us with their time and, um, you know, surgeries, but there's still a cost on those medications that we have to pay for to give these guys a chance. So. That's probably always our biggest challenge. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, so I'm guessing Molly that uh, that a lot of this information is on the website. It is. If you want to volunteer, we have a volunteer application that you go on there. We have an orientation for everybody that wants to volunteer. So they all have to come out and see what Saving Grace is, get a tour. And then you do two training sessions with an experienced volunteer just to understand how the whole process works. And then from there, we get you, um, you know, paired in a department that you are interested in and will be successful in for adoption. The adoption request is on there and also our events or right now, lack of events are all posted on the website. We are looking at starting our open houses back this fall and the open houses are something that are, is always really fun. We usually have a food truck and people from Raleigh, Wake Forest, Durham, our communities come out and you don't need an appointment. It's open to the public. You can come out and just see Saving Grace, see if you're interested in pursuing adoption or volunteering or, you know, making a donation. If there's any dogs to sponsor, that's always a great thing. And those are usually on a Thursday or Saturday. And, you know, we tell people just come out, 
and sp- plan to get some puppy love and check us out and, you know, have a good time. Nice. That's awesome. Uh, so next, Molly, I, I want to ask you some questions we call the questions we've had brewing. Um, okay. but, so I'm not sure if you've seen any of the episodes before, but uh, these are pretty fun. Um, the first one I like to ask people is, you know, some people watch YouTube, listen to podcasts, audiobooks, or read books. So uh, I'm definitely curious, Molly, what content are you currently consuming? Um, well, I probably need to consume stuff other than saving grace, <laughs> but <laughs> we do have, we do have a YouTube channel, um, okay. that's been new for us this past year. So we do have a YouTube channel. We have a, a great store, the saving grace supply company, which is, um, a local business on highway 98 in Wake Forest. And, I've done some videos there with puppies, you know, using puppies to kind of display the store and all of our items is that's been really fun. So I've been learning to use YouTube with that. I have some volunteers that I really rely on to help with that. Um, But definitely Facebook and Instagram. um, Those are probably the primary sources. Okay. That's, That's awesome. Uh, I see you guys. I love podcasts. I listen to lots of podcasts as I'm going from shelter to shelter. All the dogs are having to listen to some sort of podcast while we're riding around. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, What what podcast do you listen to? I listen to um, different ones for leadership and nonprofit. Joan Gary, I love her. She has a nonprofit, Sir Messy. podcast so i listen to her and um i love that the ed milet one i listen to his a lot and um a variety of other leadership and business and nonprofits. nice that's mm-hmm. awesome i've never heard of those so i have to look them up mm-hmm. <laughs> i would love one for saving grace um i just need to figure out the time and figure out the technology it would take to do that yeah Sounds like you're you definitely got a lot on your plate. Uh, so, um, so many great people and so many great people throughout North Carolina that have seen sheltering over the past, you know, 30 or 40 years. And, you know, especially the older people that have worked in sheltering and some of these rural counties, they have just the most interesting stories to tell. And mm-hmm. You know, still we have a long ways to go in North Carolina for animal welfare, but it has by far come come a long ways for sure. And I think social media definitely is responsible for some of that. Just learning how different some of our counties are. You know, Wake County is, you know, there's so many resources and people here. And then a couple of counties over, it's very different. And for people to learn that, you know, just a couple of counties over, there's still a lot of puppies that are needing care. So, um, you know, adoption is still very much needed. That's awesome. So the, the next question, Molly, uh, is, uh, is I, I know you're, you're a very busy person, but, uh, when, when you're not doing saving grace stuff, what do you like to do for fun? Uh, I'm a big beach person. So I love okay. to go to the beach. Yes. Okay. And I have a couple of dogs that are big, big on swimming. So we, uh, we love beach time for sure. Well, and a, and gardening. And... I'm a big gardener too. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you like to grow? I grow lots of plants as far as flowers, cutting flowers. I love cutting flowers and vegetables, all kinds of vegetables. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. I've actually got someone, I'm not going to name drop, but I've got someone I need to connect you to. Um, okay. Yeah. Might, uh, might be a good thing. Um, okay. so, uh, the, the next one is, is kind of fun. Uh, if you could have a beer with anyone dead or alive. Who oh my God. <laughs> um, that's it. I I would have it with my great grandmother. So Saving Grace is actually on her farm where she lived before me. And I would have asked her a lot of questions about the history there. Um, You know, I still have a lot of her 
cooking wear, a lot of her things. And wow. she died when I was 19. I was in college. And a couple of years later, uh, we remodeled her house and I moved in. And that's the farm that has since become Saving Grace. But, you know, I, I often think about what she used different things for there and the the way she ran the farm before I was there, which is certainly very different, but I can't imagine what she would think of it now um, and what it's become, but that's who I would, that's who I would ask just about the changes of seeing the place, you know, over the time that she was there and I'm there. I like it. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of people get to know their, great grandparents yes yeah you know, the age yeah. difference and whatnot but that's mm -hmm. that's fantastic um so last one and probably most important molly is uh where where can people find you so we are on facebook at saving grace nc as well as instagram is also saving grace nc our supply store we have like i said our supply store is a great little um like boutique and uh, pet supplies. We have things for cats and dogs. We have a locally made treat bar. So we have lots of homemade dog treats, cat treats. It's, it's really a great little spot. Um, and that's saviggracesupplyco.com. You can go on there. All the proceeds go back to the animals at Saving Grace. So even if you didn't adopt from Saving Grace, it's a great place to bring your animal and come and shop and get some great treats and um, also support our shelter animals. So that's right on Highway 98, close to close to Saving Grace. And we're also on YouTube at Saving Grace NC. Nice. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll have to check that out. I haven't seen the YouTube yet. So I'm, I'm yeah, we're, we're kind of new to that, but working on it. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, well, Molly, I, I really appreciate you taking time out to sit down and talk with me. Um, yeah. This is uh, super exciting. I, I love dogs and uh my fiance does as well so we will um, have to come see us yeah definitely uh but thanks thanks for taking out the time to hop on here and uh yeah thank uh, you for having me and supporting shelter animals and local businesses yeah definitely that's uh that's one reason why we started this it was mm -hmm. uh, a lot different early on it was uh gavin and i and i mean our number one focus has been uh small local businesses yeah. in the greater raleigh area so uh thanks thanks for uh being a part of that yeah and if there's any you know if there's any local businesses that ever want to partner with saving grace we have lots of ways they can partner with us from events to you know different sponsorships so that would be wonderful That's awesome well mm -hmm. thanks so much molly thank you all right. We'll see everyone on the next episode of Business and Brews. Until next time, y'all have a wonderful week.